Hey guys, this is Kyle Kelly from Kelly's Port, and I'm here with a really important person with the team at Bennington. This is Brad Fishburne, head of engineering. If you guys ever wonder how in the heck do our boats stay together in the unique body of water, as you well know, Brad, down at Lake of the Ozarks, this is your guy. Brad has been with the company, how long, Brad? Well, uh, just a couple months short of 25 years. Uh, the place got started maybe three months before I got there, and uh, we worked, uh, together as an entity over at uh, OMC uh, another, oh, maybe 10 or 15 years before Bennington started. Well, let's, let's chat about Bennington as a whole. As you've known it from the lifetime of the company, what from an engineering standpoint, called the nuts and bolts, what makes Bennington unique comparative to all the other manufacturers out there in your mind? So we had a laundry list of things from the old company that we, we really wanted to address. And actually a lot of them came from uh, the rough body of Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, generally speaking, if you can get them to hold up there, you've pretty well got things set. Yes, sir. As, as, as we know and our entire audience knows, it's a, it's a unique body of water, I think, is what you described it as. It sure is. Uh, over the years, too, if we get into something to where it needs a durability test, we'll, sometimes we'll pest to destruction. And so we try to pick a rough day out there at Lake of the Ozarks, a holiday weekend, and try not to be noticed too much because it feels like you're driving pretty silly but we'll we'll run them until things start to break and the boat starts to sink and That's this means crazy. the boat is airborne quite a bit when we're doing that and so, uh so get paint, paint a picture for our clients because you, you used a couple wonderful engineering terms in there to destruction i mean you're out there at the lake on a holiday weekend just driving the crap out of the boat the as fast as it'll go <laughs> hardest turns hitting the big wakes and and we we take it to the point where we're thinking nobody in their right, right mind would want to do this stuff and so we figure well if that's that's the case then then we build a boat that's pretty good so brad you started originally with the company you know the the start of the company to where the company's at now and most importantly what bennington looks like in the future when we started out, there was just a couple of us in engineering plugging away, and our biggest engines were like, you know, 90 horsepower. <laughs> uh, what a fun time to be in the industry, because all of a sudden you've got more horsepower, you've got power steering systems, and it, it has just been such a big change. So we still make a nice, you know, 20 horsepower pontoon. Now we're up to a transom that holds, you know, the Mercury V12. It's so like 1,350 pounds. And, uh, you know, those things take special engineering, but we're covering the whole thing. And today we have 20 engineers and, and we're working all the time to, to try to keep the product the best we can for our customers. 20 engineers doing 10,000 boats, 50, 60 boats a day. I mean, just how you guys keep up with it. And what, I, what I'm truly amazed about as a company is you guys are one of the, if not the largest boat builder in the industry, but you still do a wonderful job, speaking of that V12, on staying on the forefront of the technology. So guys, literally millions of you viewed the first introduction of the V12-600 that Brad and his team engineered, but uh, instead of me talking about it, let's hear from the guys that actually built the product and made it what it is today. Brad, one, holy cow, and number two, what, what went into this to, to make, make this V12 the first in the industry and only in the industry today? Well, the, the big thing for us was we we're coming in with, you know, 1,300 pounds. So when we went to look at this thing and put it on a Bennington, it was like, you know, we just needed a whole new transom. So that's basically where we started. And uh, so things kind of got doubled up back there. We have composite materials uh, that we've been using since, you know, 1999, but everything got really supersized. And we ended up also, you know, sealing up the wash wells for extra displacement in the back end of the boat, even though it's a 10 foot wide with just one engine, you know, we had to do that. We uh, developed a new fuel system, it's like 107 gallons per tank, and that's kind of up midship. Here again, we're just trying to get the balance dialed in on it, and uh, uh, from there, uh, we took it out and ran it, and you know, we really didn't have to change the bottom on this one to get it to run like this, and we were real pleased with how it handles and performs. Well, you just took us out, and 
just blew our socks off on the boat. I mean, the turning, the banking, the handling, how do you compare the performance of this to all the other products that you guys have been putting out the door? I think this thing is top notch. Just general overall usage, overall handling. We've used it for skiing, tubing, all that real life stuff instead of just, you know, the racing around type of thing. Very versatile boat. Um, you do want to look at the tachometer to know if it's running or not, and uh, that's that's really pretty nice. You're up in the front of the boat, you probably won't hear this if you're underway and you got a little bit of a breeze. I'm guilty. I walked down to the dock and I said, okay, we're going to go, and the motor was already running. I had no idea sitting there at the uh, the co-captain yep, seat that yep. this puppy was running. And, yeah, and, and if you play the throttle right, you can kind of get it to downshift and kind of launch out, and that's kind of cool. You guys have literally changed the dynamic of what a pontoon is. So long back in the, the 90s, whenever pontoons were started, it was looked at as the minivan of boats. And what's fantastic that you guys and the team has done, you have taken boats to not the minivans anymore. This is the Cadillac Escalade of the, the boat industry. What's it take from an initial thought process, or I'll call it a sketch on a bar napkin, that, hey, we should have a 30-foot boat with twin engines and 10-foot wide and all this stuff on it. What's it take from an investment standpoint to get from a bar napkin sketch to a physical boat sitting down the water? And, and that can vary a lot. You know, it starts out, like you say, on the bar napkin type of thing. And then from there, we're, we're going to spend a little bit of time generally in CAD. From there, you get into something along the line of these twin engines and you end up with balance things that you have to change. Of course. So all of a sudden, the good old days of being able to put the fuel systems all the way in the back of the boat don't pan out so well anymore because the engine weight, the speeds, things like that. So fuel systems kind of get moved forward. Another thing we'll do is, in the case of, in the case of this boat, we had like an SPS tube that's in the center of the boat. Well, we put them on the sides of the boat and uh, then we're actually able to use a, a current 10-wide uh, center tube on it and then from there you know the furniture we can kind of lay out something that's pretty typical that you know is going to be what the customer's after from there we'll go and and do a different running surface here again go back and start moving these chines around relocating things and and dialing the boat in and that can take a while uh, every once in a while you you get into something like the bow rider where it was like first try boom and there was like nothing else to do to it. Did you and, really? And uh, then you get into something like these boats and before you know it, you're making four or five of them and trying to figure out just the best way to do it. So you're kind of going in sometimes thinking you've got it made and it doesn't come easy and other times uh, it does. So Brad, if you would, we talked a little bit about the interior of the boat and the beauty of it, but obviously what makes Bennington so dynamic and different is the structural from the deck down. Tell us the components and the thoughts and the process and what, what, what it takes to make the best riding boat on the market. So one, one of the key components, it's kind of the foundation of, the, of the, the boat, like a foundation of the house, is when we got into the making a tube structure, we brought out the uh, M brackets. To a, to a very wide stance and, and that just stiffened up the boat incredibly. And so uh, that coupled with maybe a little taller cross member than what we had seen in the past mm -hmm. has, has been a really good foundation. Uh, we get into something like this bow here. We've, we've tapered the bow. It has an, uh, an extrusion that actually wraps around behind there. So it's really reinforced up in there. And then the pontoons themselves, again, they're, you know, Durability tested at Lake of the Ozarks, lifetime warranty, what goes into the, the engineering of the pontoon that makes it one of the, the safest out there in the water as well? Some of it's just the fundamentals as far as the material thicknesses and some reinforcements. And you start out with that and then you just have to verify it. Take it out there, beat it up, give it the Bubba test. That's really, Bubba keeps us out of trouble. We, <laughs> we run that stuff and, and we find out where it really really where it really ends up absolutely mm -hmm. yeah and i and i can appreciate that with all the you know the internal stringer systems built in the tritunes the the individual chambers mm -hmm. i mean it's just it's, it's it's amazing from a safety standpoint you've you've got to do quite a bit of damage to get this thing to where it's even listing much less unsafe in the open water yeah yeah 
the best way to do that is a lot of airborne time in some really crazy water. That's do, do, do you know what, you know what a place takes. has a crazy water? You yeah, know anything yeah. about that? We do. We yeah. do. Down at Lake of the Ozarks. Yeah. Yeah, Lake of the neat. Ozarks has done a lot for, for the Bennington product as far as uh, getting it up to snuff. And another question I'd be curious on as well is there's that real fine grasp between form and function. You know, Bennington's performs so well in the water, but like this beautiful QX that we're in, I mean, who, who, what's the mindset as the, the combination and the blend of not only making the best riding boat on the water, but also the best looking boat on the water? And that, that is a challenge because sometimes the best looking stuff doesn't work and the best working stuff is too ugly to buy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we, we try to do things that are subtle, make sense, and last the test of time on the engineering end. For example, like we've got a tapered bow up here mm -hmm. and it's, it's done that way for a reason. It's a little bit easier to dock when you're coming up on pylons and things like that. Or, uh, and then it also sticks out proud enough to protect the... Uh, splash fins of course and it, it's a it's a little subtle thing and it tones down the squareness of the bow so that might be an example of what you're asking well it's a, it's, it's a beautiful product and again we're, we're grateful and appreciative that you guys do not only build the best product out there in the industry backed up with the best warranty but gosh darn it you build the most beautiful boat in the world so thank hey, you we're thank grateful you. for you guys thank you very good much good seeing you here yep, thank you so again kyle kelly brad fishburn the entire team at bennington here at the bennington dealer meeting and excited to take you through all the great new products for the latest and greatest at bennington lots to look forward to in the future thank you for your time